Hello, this is Sim Racing Corner. Welcome to the channel. And this is our Sim Hub review. Uh, so, what is Sim Hub? Uh, for a start, Sim Hub is completely free. It's a collection of useful utilities for Sim racers, all accessed through a single central user interface. Hence the name of the program, Sim Hub. Right, uh, so Sim Hub performs a lot of different tasks, uh, but just in case you're not sure if there's something here for you, uh, just stick around for five minutes at least and I'll fire through a list of features of SimHub uh, before diving into a deeper review of each of the components. So we'll start at the top. Uh, games. Uh, SimHub supports over 35 titles including the latest ones and the classics going back a decade and further. And this is where you'll find the list of compatible titles. Under car settings, here you can fine tune the synchronisation of the RPM and shift light telemetry sent from the game to your SimHub connected devices. Statistics, uh, SimHub can record details of your lap times during gaming sessions for you to review later. Dash Studio, this is where we access SimHub's virtual dashboards. Dashboards can be viewed on different screens and devices and includes a full featured virtual dashboard design studio. Arduino, uh, this is where we get into the more complex uses of SimVibe. With an Arduino, SimHub can work with real automotive gauges, LEDs, matrix displays, even fans for simulating wind. With some cheap console controller motors, you can wire them up and with Shake It, control them to rumble from game effects. Base It Base Shaker. This is an alternative to SimVibe, but for free. Um, it will run a butt kicker or similar and give you detailed tactile feedback from the Sim. Nexian Display. Uh, this is an inexpensive programmable small LCD display screen. With SimHub, we can make a standalone USB powered dashboard display. UDP Relay. Some older Sim titles don't allow you to use game telemetry to be picked up on multiple devices. In brief, UDP Relay fixes that for you. Controls and Events. With controls, you can map buttons to control functions of SimHub. Events displays mapped game telemetry outputs and a triggered effect in SimHub. Also under this section, there's tabs for controller status, Fussmaster Manager and keyboard emulation for mapping buttons to keyboard strokes. Available properties, uh, this is just a large list of the telemetry cues SimHub supports and a live feed showing the data as it's being picked up from the game. Additional plugins, it's possible to expand SimHub with homebrew plugins. If you're a programmer, there's a C Sharp SDK included. Settings, uh, the general settings for SimHub can be found here. System log, SimHub activity is recorded here and useful for troubleshooting. Wow, uh, that's SimHub in a nutshell, a big fat nutshell. Not much depth in that summary, but enough to give you some impression of what SimHub is. Um, check the description for the software download link and links to useful SimHub resources. So, if any of this is interesting to you and you're still awake, um, we'll wrap around and go through SimHub with greater depth for the review segment of this video. We're back at the top of SimHub's menu and we'll look at the game compatibility list. Pause the video if you want to read through. Bear in mind this list is only up to date to the time of making this video. Dirt Rally 2.0 is coming out in the next few weeks and not supported by SimHub yet since the game hasn't been released. But I'm pretty sure it will be represented soon after launch. Uh, likewise, new titles will be added to SimHub support list as and when. In the game menu, uh, scroll down and click the thumbnail of the title you want to work with SimHub. And if you double click the thumbnail, it will launch the game for you as well. Moving down the sidebar menu, We'll skip car settings and statistics uh, as I covered them in brief in the introduction, which I think was enough. And minor features that don't need any further detail. And so, swiftly moving on to a major feature of SimHub, the Dash Studio. The Dash Studio gives us virtual dashboards we can display as resizable pop-up windows that's pinned to the foreground of our monitor, or view the dashboard on a second monitor, or through a web browser of a phone or tablet device. And finally, uh, Dash Studio supports the USB D480 LCD screen. Okay, so what is that? Well, that's a 4.3 inch TFT LCD display that's commonly incorporated into the housing of high-end sim wheels as both the video and power is supplied over a USB cable. That's a lot of options and we'll show some of these in action now to best demonstrate what SimHub's virtual dashboards are capable of. I've plastered the screen with eight of the 16 dashboards that come with SimHub to show off the design and variation of the information displayed. If you observe, you'll notice some of the dashboards are switching. Uh, that's because individual dashboards can have multiple screens. And you can flip between these screens by mapping a button on your wheel or button box. The dashboards display regular gauges as you would expect. We also have lap times, 
uh, tire temps, fuel, track maps, a leaderboard, and even a proximity radar. You name it, it's all here. Uh, lots of vital information and clearly presented through these great looking dashboards. Let me show you how I normally run SimHub's dashboards. This is a five inch screen designed for Raspberry Pis, but essentially it's a simple HDMI monitor that I'm running as a secondary screen on the PC and powered by USB. There's nothing technical about the setup, it's simply a full sized HDMI cable running from the graphics card to this screen and a USB cable connected through to a powered USB hub. Really simple, low cost and works just great. And here's SimHub running on a smartphone. There's no software installation required, the dashboard is rendered through a web browser. Uh, you just enter the address shown into the browser and it just works. Fantastic, it's device agnostic working with both Android or Apple devices so any smartphone or tablet will do. There is a tiny amount of lag compared to the game if you look carefully, but not enough to be a problem, it's still a completely viable way to run the dashboard. And this is the Dash Studio Editor. Uh, this is where we can build our own custom dashboards. Using the preset components, we can drop in elements and resize them, change the position, typeface, colors, um, all quite simply. You can make simple designs quite easily with just the central gauges with these tools, or you can create very elaborate dashboards and bring in your own graphics. And that's when things get more complicated on working out how to make telemetry function with your own custom gauges as you'll need a good understanding of how the component panel on the right hand side works. Yeah, so it's not simple stuff when you actually get down to trying to work it out. Uh, there's some help on the SimHub wiki page, but it only touches the surface without uh, much depth, uh, but it's a good place to start. Now if we head back to the Dash Studio main menu, we have here overlays. Uh, these are HUD elements like you have in your SIM titles already. But with SimHub we can move them around the screen, resize them, edit them. Uh, you can plant as many as you like around your monitor and you can create your own with the Sim Dash Studio Editor. So that's another plus point for SimHub. Okay, I think it's time to move on now. We've covered Dash Studio quite extensively at this point. Uh, but it deserved the time to cover everything as it offers so much versatility and features. Next down the list is Arduino. This is where things can get really interesting with SimHub. This is all about electronics and wiring up bespoke display components and LEDs for telemetry. Uh, this could fill an entire video or series of videos quite easily, uh, the potential is enormous. At the heart of this is the programmable Arduino microcontroller. Your PC will connect to the Arduino board and the Arduino will be wired up to your components and SimHub is doing its part by pumping through the telemetry. Um, of course, it's a little bit more complex than that, but that's essentially what you'll be doing. There's plenty of project guides online you can follow, so you don't need to be a programmer or electronics whiz, just follow the guides. And it's quite inexpensive. The electronics needed are mass produced and the parts are readily available. Unfortunately, I don't have anything to show you personally of this working, uh, but in future it may be a project I'll embark on and bring it to the channel. Um, but if you're interested in finding out more, just search online for Arduino Sim Hub projects and you will discover plenty of ideas. Next up is Shake It. Um, it doesn't mean a lot when you look at the menu, you're kind of left wondering what is it? Uh, but if you drop into the Sim Hub wiki, there's some guides you can follow. Uh, there's a couple of options. You can use Shake It to control fans for wind simulation or gamepad rumble motors like what you get on the Fnatic pedals. Again, it's Arduino based and fairly inexpensive parts again and out of the projects available this is probably one of the easiest ones you could do. Okay moving on once more we have Shake It's Base Shaker and I've been using this a lot with my single base shaker located under my pedals and I also own the Sim Experience Sim Vibe software uh, because I'm running Sim Hub's dashboards uh, it's just a convenience to run Sim Hub's Base Shaker software instead. It's also more user friendly to be frank uh, but I must admit the effects from SimVibe are more refined and it copes with many layered effects uh, without clipping. Uh, yeah, so SimVibe is better and has more features and tuning options, but it's also 89 US bucks. Um, SimHub is free and honestly the effects are really good coming from the ShakeIt software. I have no real complaints there. Um, there are 12 effects and these can be individually tuned. If you have a single base shaker setup or maybe two, I think SimHub is absolutely good enough and uh, the perfect option for anyone going for the ultra budget base shaker option. Okay, so what's next? Next is Nextian Display and I do have the components for this and it's under £15 uh, but I haven't put anything together yet and uh, that will be for another video. 
The next D in display is a small touch screen display with an onboard processor and memory. When we use this with SimHub, you upload and store the dashboard templates you want to use on the Nextian directly and SimHub will provide the usual telemetry data. So the Nextian doesn't take a video input directly from your GPU. It's using the uploaded templates for the visualization and it's connected by USB. It's not as simple as plugging in the Nextian into your PC directly. It requires one of these little USB TTL serial cable converters to interface in between. Um, again, on the SimHub wiki, there's well-documented guides. So that's that. Uh, let's skip the final four menu items so we can wrap up the review. Um, to be honest, there isn't anything there which I didn't mention in the intro that you need to know with any greater depth. So let's move on to the summary. Wow, this was a tricky video to produce. Uh, SimHub has so much to offer and hopefully I haven't missed anything major from this coverage. Um, I'm personally, I'm keen to dive into uh, some of the DIY projects using SimHub, so stay tuned as I have at least one coming up in the near future. So chaps, that's SimHub. It's amazing. Um, there's so many useful tools here and it's not as complicated as you might have expected and it's very well laid out and user friendly. And if you're watching this review in a year's time, who knows how much more has been added? Uh, what a super piece of software and it's completely free. But I would highly recommend you donate to the developer to support the ongoing development of the software if you use SimHub. And that's the SimHub review and I hope you found something useful in this coverage. And if you did, uh, please hit the like to help support the channel, thank you. And consider subscribing to Sim Racing Corner if you want to see more content like this. That's it, we're at the end. Uh, so all I have to say is happy simming and I'll catch you on the flip side. Take care and bye bye for now.